Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Braun in Ellis County, Kansas. And he has a couple who are going through some custody growing pains. And the mom just slings all kinds of mud at this poor man. <laughs> and it, I mean, some of it seems very obviously untrue, but I'll let you guys watch. Both of you have a couple of things. You are both pro se, meaning without benefit of counsel. You are held to the same standard as a lawyer. I am not allowed to assist you in how to proceed with the case, present evidence, make objections. I'm not allowed to do any of that uh, on your behalf. Um, this, you know, a lot of people think that uh, it's like Judge Judy. Uh, you just get to show up and yell and make your, that's not the way it works in a real court of law. Judge Judy is an entertainer, a very good one, by the way, but uh, she's an entertainer. I, while I think I'm entertaining, I'm not an entertainer. I am a judge. So uh, those are the rules. Um, the first option I will give you, of course, is the option to continue the hearing so that you can secure counsel. This is an extremely important case, and I know attorneys um, are expensive, but uh, you have that option. So, Ms. Wallace, do you intend to proceed today pro se? Yes. Mr. Miller, do you intend to proceed pro se? Yes. All right. Ms. Wallace, it is your motion. You have the burden of proof. You may present your evidence. Do you have any witnesses or evidence you would like to present? I do. Okay. You may call your first witness. I don't have a witness, but I do have evidence. Okay, you want to testify on your own behalf or on uh, in this case? Yes. Okay. Mr. Miller, do you intend to testify as well? Yes. All right. If both of you would raise your right hands to where I can see them on the screen, please. There we go. I will administer two oaths to you. Do each of you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do each of you submit to the jurisdiction of the state of Kansas and of the United States of America for purposes of your testimony today, including but not limited to an action for perjury arising out of your testimony today? Yes. Yes. All right. You can put your hands down. Record or reflect both parties are under oath. That sufficient safeguards are in place to allow them to testify remotely. Um. Ms. Wallace, after you testify, Mr. Miller will get an opportunity to ask you questions. It's called cross-examination. If Mr. Miller testifies, you will be given the same opportunity. Neither of you are entitled to interrupt the other. Uh, if you wish to make an objection to any of the testimony, you make the objection in the proper uh, in appropriate format. You would say objection hearsay, objection argumentative, those types of things, but don't speak over each other. Um, as the evidence uh, comes in. For the record, I did review the emergency motion and I reviewed the response, which was filed by Mr. Miller, but you need to keep in mind that that is not evidence. Those are simply the pleadings that I review in preparation for a trial. So it's that none of that evidence is before the court. It is simply an emotion. Do you understand? Yes. Ms. Wallace? Okay, Ms. Wallace, you may proceed. Okay, it states in his um, res responsive motion that um, that the report of abuse uh, was cl claimed unsubstantial, and that this was the unsubstantial abuse was done. the The last one was done on one thirty one. My son had called me from school, I do believe, on the 3rd or no, no, the 5th of February, and had told me that his dad had, after a, a prank, that his dad had held him down to the ground and choked him and said, do you think this is funny? I do have evidence of that, and I would like to show you. 
of his, his neck. Are you able to see that? I, I I can see a picture. I have no idea what it is, and I can't. Uh... I tried to give it to the girls there. Can you hold your phone? I tried to give it to the girls there, but they told me that you would like to ask for evidence. It's this way. No, his head is Okay. Okay. I see some sort of picture. Okay. Well, I can I can drive it over there if you would like. I'm not opposed to doing that. I actually drove there to actually give the report. Um his he's told me he had to wear his hoodie up for two days. Going to school like this. That's pretty sad. Um also states that every time the DCF workers come he's um this is nathan arnold is his name i sent the pictures to nathan arnold after the substan the unsubstantial and i told nathan that i was going to get another worker because i do not trust him um he said you can do that after i showed him the picture of my son uh he said that um he did not see any marks on my son when he went over there. Um, he did not take clothing off of my son to check if there was marks. When I talked to my mother weeks prior, she told me, because my son's been locked in a room, have you, for months, only allowed to come in and out of his room to eat, go to, go to school, He's been grounded. I am not allowed visitation, um, which it states in there that I am allowed visitation. Grounding my son is is just is not a, like it's not. If he's been grounded, you don't take that away from a parent. I mean, if if he was the parent, I. If if I if he was getting visitation, I don't I would not take that away from him. All kids need their parents. Whether it be him or me or my ex's kids, if I ground them, they need their parents. Everybody needs their parents. You don't take that away from them. Um, but grounding my child and taking my child away from me is not okay. Um, but the this abuse right here, I'm sorry, that's not okay. And and then um, what else am I? Oh, my mom, I did talk to my mom a couple weeks ago and my mom told her, told me, you need to get your son out of that situation. And I said, yes, I do realize that. Um, my mom and I have not talked in a few weeks. I've been told that my mom's going to stick up for him. I had a conversation with her outside, and I guess she's been having conversations with my son. Um, what else? I got to look at my notes here. Oh. My son told me he got slapped when he didn't do the dishes. And he told him, that, uh, he said, go ahead and hit me back. He said, if you do, you'll be dead. He said, you won't do it again, you'll be dead. He said, I get slapped for having bad grades. If I don't get my grades up, he said, he'll slap me again. There was another incident in Plainville. He took his belt off and whipped him with a belt. DCF was called then. They went over there. My mom is the one that called DCF then. Um, he's been body slammed to his bed.
Um, he has he had gotten today was his first day back at school. He had got kicked out of school. Um, a friend had given him a gummy and he had held it for 13 minutes and gave it to another child. And they had talked about kicking him out of school entirely till last year, till next year. But when your dad smokes weed at home, I mean, he my kid probably thinks it's okay. He smokes flour and he does dab pins. My son Jack, told me here say there's no proof of that. Um well okay, hold on. There's an objection. So when there's an objection, I have to rule on it. The objection was hearsay as to what your son said. Is that correct? As opposed to her saying I smoke weed. Oh. You said he smokes weed. My son told me, and you said objection hearsay. Is that correct? Yes, to the that fact is, okay. that is sustained. That is sustained. Unless the son is available to testify. He should He's, be home. Has he been subpoenaed? No. I will subpoena him. Today, today, today's your hearing date, ma'am, that this okay. is why the court but, set aside time on its calendar. Okay, but I will tell you that Bill did on a phone call, and, and I I did hear Bill say, I, it's not weed, it is flour. Hearsay. And that's what she's saying. You said it, so that's not a hearsay because you're available as a witness. You've been sworn in. Overruled. Do you have additional evidence? No, my son heard that as well. Okay. Do you have my, son the, my son was on the phone with me. Okay. Do you have additional evidence? Is there any other evidence you want to present? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, uh, Oh, there's cameras in the house. So if we do have to get cam um like uh a fitting a footage of the house, what's going on in the house, we can get those because my my son told me that there's cameras in the house because if my son's getting a snack, he's told to put it away. Um there are friends that are available to be subpoenaed as well that knows what's going on in the home. Ms. Wallace. That should have been done prior to today's hearing. Today yeah, is your trial. In case we have to continue it. There is no motion for continuance. You said you wanted to go forward today. Okay. Well, I didn't know if we had to continue. I just would like some visitation rights back. All right. So you're not asking for a change in residential custody. You're asking for vis for parenting time. Okay. It does say and not exercising exercising parental time. It does say that in the in the emergency motion says not exercising parent parenting time. Right. And I looked at the last order in the case. Apparently, when the residential custody <clears throat> was changed by agreement from you to Mr. Miller, you were to have alternate Christmas school break and some parenting time in the summer. And that's because I believe Mr. Miller resided in New Mexico at that time, correct? No, he didn't ever did go to New Mexico. I'm supposed to have the full summer is what the way um, the Kansas Legal Service attorney read to me. No, no, ma'am. Ma I'm looking at the agreed order modifying custody, which was signed by Judge Biddle. Is there another order that you're alleging is, um, is that, has there been one since the change in April? of 2020 um i'm not sure i i i have it on my phone because there's on. not one in the court file there hasn't been any changes your honor okay. well if there was it needs to be filed with the court and ms wallace there the last order was filed with the court on april 29th 2020 and paragraph um Seven. Let's see. Says alternate Christmas book school break and to allocate summer parenting time to the plaintiff. 
Okay, exactly. And other will be arranged by the parties. Um, and that's all it says regarding visitation. Okay, you just read alternate Christmas, Christmas breaks. Break. I don't get them during Christmas breaks. I get them one day. Okay, well, uh, so you're asking, so what are you asking for in modification regarding parenting? I'm asking for my Christmas breaks. I'm asking for my summer breaks, my full summer breaks. Well, That's what I'm asking for. Okay, it says allocate. It says allocate summer parenting time. It doesn't say the entire summer. It says allocate summer parent. I don't know what it means. I was not the judge on that. That's Judge Biddle. Have you ever had the entire summer? I've had half the summer, which I'm getting half the summer this summer. Okay. And so you're requesting for half. There's apparently been arrangements already made that you'll get half this summer. I have not had him since that one Christmas day. Miss Wallace, Miss Wallace, I. You said I'm getting him half this coming summer. Is that what you just said? I will get him. He won't. He won't respond to me. So you've not reached an agreement for that. No, he won't let me have him. He meaning Mr. Miller. Yeah, I haven't had him since that one Christmas day. He refuses to set any parenting time for me. He's not exercising it is what I'm telling you. Well, I'm asking you what I need specifics as to what you are requesting in the way of parenting time. You want one half of the summer? And yeah, and I'm wanting my every other Hold weekend. On. And that there's no order for every other weekend. And I, I assume I there was money. none because it indicated Mr. Miller was going to be residing in New Mexico and obviously every other weekend wouldn't work. So you're asking now for every other weekend? Mm -hmm. And what would you propose the weekend begins at when? This weekend. No, what what day? Friday or Saturday? Fridays. Friday from what time? After school, I'll be there at 4 o'clock. Friday, 4 p.m. to Sunday at what time? Um... Four o'clock to Sunday at four. Okay. So you're asking for half the summer, every other weekend, Friday to Sunday. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yep. Anything else you're asking for in the way of parenting time? Um, I'll pick him up and he can come get him. We'll divide the Correct. She does not pay any child support or help me out whatsoever. Mr. Miller. Know, hold on. Mr. Miller, remember, you're not to interrupt. You're going to get your chance to testify. I'm, I'm, I'm simply trying to find out what Ms. Wallace is attempting to seek. Divide transportation. Anything else, Ms. Wallace? No, you don't. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't transportation. I, I pick up, and he, he takes home, or we meet halfway. Okay. All right. Anything else that you want in the way of parenting time? No. Nope. But okay. I mean, I, this, that's if he wants, my son wants to keep getting abused. All right. Um, anything else that you want to present regarding your case? No. Nope. Okay. Mr. Miller, you're under oath and now you have an opportunity. Do you have any questions you wish to ask uh, Ms. Wallace? Not argue, just questions you need to ask. If you have questions, you need to ask them directly to her that she responds. You also will be given an opportunity to testify, as she did, regarding, because now I think what this case is boiled down to is Ms. Wallace is requesting not a change of custody, but is requesting specific parenting time. So okay. do you have questions for Ms. Wallace? I do. If that, is a, if that is a picture of Kelton's neck with the bruises, how come I can't see his face? Because that's what I was sent during at school. Well, there's that's no, no, no comment. You're, you're allowed to ask questions and you can comment when you testify. And then Ms. Wallace gets an opportunity to ask you questions. So do you have any other questions for Ms. Wallace? No. Okay. Um, now, Mr. Miller, do you wish to testify? Yes. You may do so. <clears throat> I testify that um, I have not kept Kelton from his mother as long as I feel like Kelton is safe at her house. Um, when she was married to her ex-husband, Butch, Butch beat her up. And 
the last time that he was at their house together. Um, I had, there had been an incident where Butch had beat her up. I wouldn't let Kelton go over there. She had told me that they quit drinking. So that sounds like, so You're not allowed to interrupt, Ms. Wallace. He didn't interrupt you. No, no, you don't get, Ms. Wallace, you don't get interrupt. You're going to get, you get what's called rebuttal testimony. You can testify later, but don't interrupt him while he's testifying. Mr. Miller. So I'd let Kelton go back over there for a weekend day. And when Kelton came back, I had asked Kelton if they were drinking. He told me they were not. So I let Kelton go back over there the next weekend and spend the night. And I had to come over Sunday morning and get my son because Butch had beat her up. Uh, Kelton was at her husband's parents' house. I had no idea where Nicole was. I had no idea where Butch was. I went to her mother-in-law's house, picked up Kelton. I did not let Kelton go back over there because I was afraid for his safety while he was in the house with Butch. <clears throat> she has since divorced him and moved to Hayes. This is the first summer she has requested to even have him in four years for half the summer. I let him go over there. And when he came back, his behavior and his grades in school this year have plummeted. Um, I had him on the honor roll for three years. I taught him how to read when I got him. He couldn't read when I got him. And uh, his, he was on the honor roll for three years. And after she is, there was a whole year she did not even see him while we lived in Plainville. She didn't see him for Christmas, Thanksgiving, summer break. While she was with Butch, she wasn't interested in him. And when I found out he wasn't safe over there towards the end, I wouldn't let him go. But after she got a divorce, he went over and spent half the summer. He came back. His behavior went downhill. His grades in school have went downhill. Um, his, he has told my sister that his mother was encouraging him to fail because as long as he was doing good in my home, he wasn't going to get pulled. I have since not let him go over there because of incidences that he has told me about going on while he was there. She buys alcohol for minors that makes, and one of which is his friend that he hangs out with. I'm worried he's got access to alcohol in her house and he is exhibiting problems already without bringing alcohol into it. He's a 15 year old boy. Um, I, I feel like she has affected him poorly. And that is why I have limited her, his contact with her to the point where I monitor their phone calls for the last three weeks. And whenever he brings up, he's gotten a bad grade or gotten in trouble in school. Her response to him has been, it's okay. You're just rebelling because you want to come live with me. I feel mm -hmm. like she is encouraging his behavior, making him think it will result in him getting to live with her or he's not held accountable for his grades and he is able to do whatever he wants. He doesn't, she can't, I got him because she couldn't control him. He, he was pulled from her house in the middle of the night and taken to my sister's because he was abusing her and she could not handle him. Um, I am here today with my sister, her sister, and her mother who are willing to testify that he is not in a good place over there that she is doing things that he does not need to be around. That is a detriment to him and his future. Do you wish to call the witnesses and have them testify? Yes, I will call my sister, Chris Scarborough. Okay, that Ms. Is Scarborough, this. you'll need to be on the screen. I need to place you under oath. Hello, Honor, Your Honor. And hello. I need you to raise your right hand. I, I need to administer both the oaths to you, as you may have heard earlier. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Do you submit to the jurisdiction of the state of Kansas and of the United States of America for purposes of your testimony today, including but not limited to an action for perjury arising out of your testimony today? I do. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miller, she is not allowed to testify in the narrative. You need to ask her specific questions, okay? Okay. Um, has Kelton told you that his misbehavior and his bad grades in school have resulted in his mother telling him that he needs to fail. Yes, he did. Have you seen any evidence in the time that you've been around my son and I that I am abusing him or being too hard on him for his grades and his behavior? No, I have not. From what you know of Nicole, 
do you feel she is a safe environment for Kelton to go visit? I do not. Um, can I elaborate on that, Judge? Uh, if he asks you the question, you do elaborate. Do you elaborate? Um, yes. Um, when Kelton was brought to my home in the middle of the night by DCF, um, Kelton was not, did not know my husband and I, and um, I asked DCF the reasoning for him being pulled and being brought to our home where he was a stranger. And um, Kelton had told us in front of DCF that he was removed from the home because he was a he had beat up his mother, but he had no heat in his home. He was burning furniture in a fire pit to stay warm. And he was also also told us that he had no food in the home and that he was not safe there. So I do not feel that Nicole is a safe environment for Kelton. No further questions. You have no further questions. No further questions. Okay, Ms. Walt. No, no. You have to, ma'am, ma'am. Oh, I'm Please, sorry. Ma she's okay. allowed to ask. She's allowed to ask questions now. Ms. Thank Wallace, you. do you have any questions? I find that funny. No questions. No, no, no. You need to ask. Do you have questions for this witness? Yes, I do. Um. I would like to know why I don't have heat in the home when my landlord was paying for my heat. Answer that for me. I can't answer that. The only thing that I was told was by Kelton that he was burning furniture in a fire pit to stay warm to keep him and his brothers warm. That is what Kelton told me. Seems odd. I'm sorry. I said that seemed odd. No, no, you're not. That's a comment. That's not a question. Do you have a question? Um, Kelton told me that. Kelton told me that um, he told you that he uh, his dad beat you. So is that a lie that you are telling today? I don't understand the question. Is that could a lie? That could, that could, you repeat, could you repeat the question? Sure. Kelton told me that he told you that his, that his dad had beat you, beat, beat him. So is that a lie that you're telling today that you... No, I'm not telling a lie. I got. I guess I don't understand the question. Ms. Wallace, do you have any other questions regarding her testimony? No. Okay. Mr. Miller, do you have any other witnesses? Yes, I'd like to call her sister, Alicia Wiseman. Alicia... Wiseman, do you, Mr. Miller, let me ask you this: it, Ms. Wiseman, think uh, they, is there another? You said, I believe you said, Ms. Wallace's mother is there also. Yes, sir. Are you going to have her testify as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you have her join on the screen? I'll just put both those witnesses under at the same time. They won't testify at the same time. Just going to administer the oaths. Okay. Would both of you raise your right hands? Do, each, do both of you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Do each of you submit the to the jurisdiction of the state of Kansas and of the United States of America for purposes of your testimony today, including but not limited to an action for perjury rising out of your testimony today? Yes. All right. Okay. And so, Ms. Wiseman, if you'll remain, and the other lady, if you would step aside. Uh, Mr. Miller, you may ask Ms. Wiseman questions. Alicia, have you ever seen any evidence that would suggest that I'm beating or mistreating Kelton? No, I have not. From what you know of your sister and her habits, do you feel like that is a safe environment for Kelton? No, it's not a safe environment for him right now. Could you elaborate on that? Her ex-husband beat the heck out of her, um, took a bar stool over her head and about killed her. 
my own sister. I and comes crying to my, my mom and I. And I can't see Kelton living in an environment that somebody's going to beat him like that and maybe kill him because he I'm sorry. He about killed my sister. My only sister. I don't think it's a safe place. She's not hanging around the right people at all. She She's been drinking a lot, and I don't think she makes the best decisions when she's drinking. She says she's going to get help and never gets help. And she just continues and continues and continues, and she goes back and forth to her ex-husband. That's going to kill her. And she says she's not doing anything, but I have proof. I have proof that he beat her. She was at my own house calling for help. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and do you know of any recent occurrences where she's been back around Butch? <laughs> yes. There, she was with Butch a while back. I don't have the exact date. It's on my phone. But she's been with Butch back and forth um, at his house. Her ex-husband's son is fixing her car right now and i know she's there with him and i know how he can snap just like that and hurt somebody and i don't want kelton in that environment at all kelton is a real good boy he does not deserve to have his mom himself being beat up Further questions? <laughs> Further questions? Do you have questions, uh, Ms. Um, Wallace? No. No? Okay. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> uh, next witness, Mr. Miller? I call Jeanette Wallace, her mother. Okay. And is it Jeanette? Yes. Last name, please? Wallace. Jeanette Wallace. Okay, very good. Ms. Wallace, you're under oath, and Mr. Miller will now ask you questions. Mr. Miller? Annette, have you seen any signs or evidence of me abusing Kelton or being too hard on him for the grounding? No, I have not seen any signs. Do you feel like Nicole can provide a safe environment for Kelton? No, I do not think that she will. Can you elaborate? Just uh, like my daughter said, um, I think she needs help with a little bit of drinking she does. And I fear for the other kids, too, that's in the room. But, um, you know, Kelton, we raised him until he was little. His dad came and got him two, three years ago. But otherwise, me and his grandpa raised Kelton. His mom came once in a while. But um, it was hard. But Kelton, he has ADHD. And um, I fear that if anything happens, Kelton will take it out on him. But otherwise, I think Kelton will be better here and stable for school. So. No further questions. Oh, no, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Your daughter may have questions for you. <laughs> Ms. Nicole Wallace, do you have any questions for your mother? What about the FRS calls that you made in towards Bill? I uh, didn't make. You did. You admitted to me. Oh, I mean, Miss Wallace, that, Ms. Uh, Nicole Wallace, that's argumentative. You I, you just you're supposed to ask questions, not. Sorry, it's hard. What? Why did? How come you admitted to me that you turned him in? I don't think I admitted it to you. <laughs> you know, you were drinking so much, Nicole. 
if I did turn him in, you would know. Oh, I do. Okay. I, I turned him in. You know why? Because I heard stories. Oh. I heard stories that uh, you're telling me. And when I got closer, I, I'm, I'm noticing more and more. But Nicole, I don't, I think right now he's more stable here. Please, I love you, but he's more stable here. I just don't like what you're doing. I love you, but I just don't like what you're doing. Ms. Nicole Wallace, do you have any other questions? I love you too, Mom. All right. Mr. Miller, do you have any other witnesses you wish to present? No, I do not, but I would like to present. Um, I'm subject to random UAs at work. I just took one on 214. This doesn't say I passed, but this is proof I took one for work and I still have a job. I took one 214. Um, the other allegation she's talking about with DCF was also investigated and um, proven unsubstantiated. All right. Any uh, additional evidence? Mr. Miller, What one question I have is you have a 15-year-old son yes, uh, and apparently has not had much contact with his mother. Do you have a proposal for some type of parenting time? Um, I would like to see it limited somewhat like it is now where if I feel like I haven't kept him away if I feel like the environment he's going to is safe but I would like to keep the option that if I know there are bad things going on there he shouldn't be around to be able to not not allow him to go up until up until he distributed or showed the bad behavior and getting in trouble and telling me the things that were going on over there and before I had found out that Butch was beating her up he was able to go over there whenever she wanted. I would maybe supervise visitation and I would like to see it up to me to where if I feel like if nothing else, that if it isn't safe over there, then I have the right to keep him at home. Other than that, if she was doing the right things and was a safe environment, I have no problem with him going over there. She's just, I just don't feel that she's a safe environment for him. She's allowing him access to things that he doesn't need access to yet. He doesn't need to be able to run around all hours of the night. He doesn't need to be able to drink when he wants to. He has his, he needs to show accountability. He needs to keep his grades up. He needs to think about his future. And that's all I got. Okay. Um, Ms. Nicole Wallace, do you have any questions for Mr. Miller regarding his proposed parenting plan? Yeah, I do. I'd like to him to be here this summer so he can do his driver's ed. Because Mr. Miller will not do that with him. I don't think he should be over there for half the summer. I didn't have any problems with him until he spent half the summer with you. I had him on the off pole. If he would have been at the football meeting, he would have been an F's and a felony now since you've been in it here. Now, if you would have been at the football meeting, you would have heard all they, the coaches, they said, the first four weeks of their freshman year, they got good grades, and then they, if they don't pay attention, then they all go downhill. But you're, you can't even be in the same room with me for our child. So you should have been at that football meeting. Hey, all the do, you parents have, do, you, do you have questions for Mr. Wallace? I'm sorry, um, Mr. for Mr. Miller. <laughs> yes, I would like to have some parenting time back. That's not a question. That is a statement. You need to ask him questions. Um, if you've got questions, you're welcome to ask him. That, but and you're going to you can make a statement. Don't worry. But I need to know: Do you have any questions for him? Can I talk to my son without you being in the same room? There's no reason why I can't have that. No, because I have heard you on the phone encouraging violence against me. You told him you were going to get him on steroids so he could kick my butt. You guys were discussing golf. And he like said, that. He, I heard you, Nicole. I monitor the phone calls. He was talking about golf and that he didn't like it because it wasn't a contact sport. You suggested he could beat me in the face with the golf club. Nicole, I never said anything like that. 
I never, heard. Never, no, 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 folks. This is exactly what I was warning you about. Okay. okay. You can't okay. interrupt each other. You asked a question. Can you talk to him uh, without you being in the room? And he answered no. Do you have any other questions? No. Okay. No other questions. All right. Uh, Mr. Miller, you don't have any other evidence you want to present, correct? No, sir. All right. Um, oh, Mr. Cole, except yeah. for attached to the response that I sent, there is the latest DCF for this last incident saying it was unsubstantiated. It's it's in the there's response that I gave you, but that is it. I didn't know if you saw that or not. It, it was attached and I did see it, yes. That's it, Your Honor. All right. All right, Ms. Wallace, um, you have now indicated what you're really asking for, some type of parenting time with your son and some type of telephone communication that is not monitored, correct? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Miller has objected to that, and he stated during your examination as to why. Um, so do you have anything else you want to present in the way of parenting time whether it be by phone, communication, or in person with uh, Kelton. I would just like to have my weekends back with Kelton, whether they be at my mom's house, my sister's house. Is is your mom's house or your sister's house a an option? Mr. Miller, I, they're there. They're both shaking their heads no, but I can have them come over and tell you one by one if you want. Okay. So neither uh, Ms. Wiseman or, is it Jeanette or Annette? Jeanette. 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 Okay. Is it, so is, so Jeanette Wallace and Alicia both indicated they do not want to supervise visitation between Nicole Wallace and Kelton. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Uh, I do have no, no. I, you you had suggested your sister and mom, and I was just seeing if that was an option. Uh, could you have them, Ms. Nicole Wallace? Yes, I do have a foster mom here that I can see if I can go over there. Who is the she foster? Julie Newman. She works at the courthouse here. And you're where, ma'am? Ellsworth. At Ellsworth. So she's foster mom to who? Well, she, she is a foster mom. Oh, she's not a foster mom to any of your children. No, she takes like she'll like if she wants my kids for a weekend, she'll be like, hey, can I? She's had Kelton for a couple weekends, like during the summer. Like if Kelton wants to go over there, she'll have Kelton for a few weekends. And what is what does she do at the courthouse? Oh, gosh, I don't know what she's like. Do you know, Axie? Objection, Your Honor, they are friends. The woman she is talking about, they are close friends. I am not actually a friend with her. Yeah, My well, kids. Okay. Okay. Can I uh, can I make one more statement, Your Honor? If there is some kind of visitation, when I took Kelton, I had promised Nicole if she let me have him, I wouldn't make her pay child support. But if there is any kind of visitation, I don't want to be responsible for uh, transportation. If she wants to see him, she don't pay child support. She can come get him and drop him. Okay, I will. Okay. Well, there will be no sharing of transportation and whatever parenting time, since um, Ms. Wallace doesn't pay any child support, she will be responsible for transportation. Okay. okay. Folks, um, this is the, uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask for argument because you already started arguing. And this was actually set for 30 minutes, but I've allowed it to go on because my later hearing today got canceled. Uh, but, uh, this is one of the pitfalls of um, not being represented by an attorney. This court simply has not got sufficient information to make a meaningful decision regarding what is in Kelton's best interest. Um, no, don't interrupt me, ma'am. Okay. I've been tolerant and I have tried to cooperate to the extent I can, but you are not going to interrupt me. Do you understand? Very good. Trying to lay out the, the situation that you've placed the court in. And that is the, uh, I have evidence, I have no dates. I don't know when these events occurred. 
I don't know what's going on regarding the school. Uh, we have, it, it is simply um, impossible based on this kind of evidence to make a meaningful decision regarding Kelton. <coughs> so that is your, Ms. Wallace, you had the burden of proof. Burden of proof means that you have to present to the court sufficient evidence to sustain your request for an emergency order. It is not my job to develop the evidence. It is yours. And um, you have failed in that regard. Not You simply didn't know how to present um, a appropriate case to be persuasive with the court and explain what is in your son's best interest. The last order in this case left visitation wide open. There is not any every other weekend. That's not in there. It doesn't say all summer. It says allocate summer parenting time means allocate means um, uh, come to some type of arrangement and every other Christmas break. That's what the order said. And the order signed by the judge at your request, both of you, says that transferring residential custody to the defendant, that would be Mr. Miller, as requested by the party, is, is in the best interest of the child. Um, what I do have is I have the plaintiff, Nicole Wallace's sister, and her mother testifying against her about their concerns about Kelton's safety in her home. That even though you apparently are divorced from some man named Butch, I think that's a man, isn't it? I, yeah, I, a year ago. All right. That according to the sister, uh, there's still contact. I've got allegations that you drink, uh, you consume alcohol. That was from your sister and your mother, uh, that they, they feel that that is a safety risk. So, and I've got a 15-year-old um, teenager who, um, if given the latitude, like any other 15-year-old, is going to engage in behaviors that are not in his best interest uh, without proper supervision. So, um, and I don't even have a good parenting plan presented. So here's what the court is going to do. The one thing the court does know is that all children, even 15-year-olds, need to have some contact with both parents. Doesn't necessarily mean every other weekend, but it does mean some sort of contact. Uh, Mr. Um, Miller, you reside in Russell? Yes, sir. Okay. So what the court will order at this time, based on the motion, is that uh, Ms. Wallace can have visitation with Kelton in Russell uh, during uh, appropriate hours. That will be one week end day, um, either Saturday or Sunday. That must be arranged in advance by Wednesday at eight o'clock. So by Wednesday at eight o'clock, you need to contact Mr. Miller and let him know if you're going to take a Saturday or a Sunday, and that will be every other weekend. All right. So, and that will start at your request this weekend. So this is the 18th. So you will have to call Mr. Miller by 8 p.m. or before. Uh, wait, let me let me even do this better. Do you have a cell phone, Ms. Wallace? You're on mute. Yeah. So that, that okay, and do you have the ability to text? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Miller, do you have a cell phone that accepts texts? Yes, sir. All right, you will, because this way we have a record and it can be obtained, so it's not, he told me on the phone. You will text Mr. Miller on or before Wednesday, March 20th at 8 p.m. as to which day this weekend, either the 23rd or the 24th, that you wish to exercise parenting time. It will be exercised in Russell um, and um, it will commence. I don't I don't understand this. Does Kelton, does he have a job right now or anything that this would interfere with? He does not at this time, but we're looking into getting him. Over. I understand. Um, so. 
uh, we'll make it from one o'clock to six o'clock. That way you can have dinner with him. So you will let Mr. Miller know if you don't contact him by text by eight, on or before March 20th at 8 p.m. as to which day you want visitation, there will be no visitation. Understood? Can I take, can I take him to Hayes? Uh, no, I think we're going to start with Justin Russell. There's not much to do in Russell. No, figure it out. That's where he lives. So, um, and, um, and then we will do this for a while so you can reestablish a relationship. Mr. Miller will then have, you know, uh, uh, some type of track record, so to speak, to go off of. And Kelton will have contact with you and it'll have some safety features put in place. Okay. Um, we will do that for the next couple of months uh, until we get ready to go to the summer. I'm not going to establish any summer visitation, but I'm going to advise both of you that you need to come up with a concrete plan uh, for some type of summer visitation. Now, Kelton will be, when does he turn 16? October 24. Okay, so he'll be 15 throughout the summer. He may, in fact, obtain employment this summer, which will affect visitation. I'm not sure. Uh, we have lots of things that can occur because you've got a teenage boy. Uh, so um, you'll need to do what's in his best interest. If you want to come back to court regarding a plan for the summer or modification of this order, you must contact my administrative assistant, Sandy, um, here at the district court. Get a hearing scheduled. Ms. Wallace, you'll be, if it's you that requests it, you will need to file a notice of hearing, serve it on Mr. Miller, set aside sufficient time. If you want to try to represent yourself again at your own peril, you're welcome to do that. Um, but if it if it's anything like the evidence today. Um, he only had one attorney and he told me to do it this way. Then you can go speak to him. I'm I'm not. I don't know what was said. I'm just okay. telling you that this evidence was insufficient for me to make an adequate order regarding Kelton that is in his best interest. I put together what I can based on the evidence that was presented. So, Mr. Miller, every other weekend, so this weekend coming up, then the next weekend, of course, I believe will be Easter. Um, no. The next weekend will not. Next weekend is Easter after this weekend. So you'll have him on Easter. The following weekend will be the weekend of the 6th and 7th of April. So by, just as an example, Ms. Wallace, by April 3rd, on or before April 3rd at 8 p.m., you need to text Mr. Miller and let him know whether you want the 6th or 7th of April, and you will oh, have him again for that afternoon. Forget. What's that? I won't forget. I call okay. my son. But... I'm just explaining how this works. Now, as far as telephone contact goes, I will allow telephone contact, but I will allow Mr. Miller to monitor it based on the evidence that was presented today. Um, and, um, and that will continue again until May if Ms. Wallace requests a hearing. And if there's no hearing requested prior to May, it'll continue through the summer on this same arrangement. Understood? Yes. So I can contact him? Contact who? Son, or are you just going to, Bill, or are you just going to have him call me when he can? Yeah, I'll have him call you when he can, when we have time, depending on what's going, going on in our lives as well. Okay, well, we'll, do, um, we we'll do this, Mr. Miller. Um I will order that um, you have at let Ms. Wallace have telephone contact with Kelton at least one day a week. Okay. And you can monitor it, uh, but he's going to be on the phone with his mother. You will text and say, Kelton would like to call you on such a day. If it doesn't fit her work schedule, you work something out. You have to take as much responsibility as Ms. Wallace does on making sure that gets done. Yes, sir. Okay, so at least one day a week, and um, we'll just continue on that and see where we end up. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All 
All right. And so, Ms. Wallace, if you want, if you think things are going well and you want to expand upon the visitation, you've got to file a motion. You've got to do, well, you've got to contact my assistant and schedule a hearing and serve Mr. Miller appropriately with the notice of hearing. Understood? Can I get my son a phone? Doesn't he have a phone? He does, but his dad knows work. Can I get my son a phone? No. Because I think the phone the phone was taken from Kelton as a disciplinary measure for getting in trouble at school, and that's I'm not saying that's appropriate or inappropriate. I'm saying that's somewhat common. So no, not at this time. Anything else? No. Mr. Miller. Nothing, Your Honor. Okay. Um. Your Honor, can I make yep. a statement, please? Uh, could I request that she not to be last? She has called numerous welfare checks in on me. If I don't answer her phone in a timely manner, she blows up my phone and then calls in a welfare check. Mr. Miller, I can't do anything about that. I could say it's not a good practice, but if you feel that it's reached the level of harassment, you can refer it to the county attorney. There is a, uh, um, or you could file a, a protection from stalking order or request. Okay. Um, there's options available to you, but that's really not appropriate for me to deal with on this motion. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. All right. So we'll have every other weekend, I'll try to prepare an order from this and I will get it filed. All right, anything else that you can think of before we adjourn? No, Your Honor. Ms. Wallace? All right, we will be adjourned. I'll prepare an order from today's hearing. Thank you. Well, she could have gotten to the exact same place had she just come to court and say, I would like to see my child more often. I would like more visitation. She didn't have to go through all that mudslinging because all it did was make her look bad. And then it, it opened the door to bring out other things that are in her life going on that that none of that stuff really mattered anymore he's gone from what i heard in the hearing and she would like to see her child more all she had to do is that she didn't have to go through all this other stuff and the one thing well a couple things the the um bruise on him He's playing football. He's going to have bruises. He just is. He's playing football. And the other thing is, it's not really a bad idea for dad to have a, the psych on their kids. You know, to be able to, you know, in a look, uh, just look at them and know exactly, you know, they would then know exactly that they're in trouble. They, he doesn't need to be loud and, you know, all that stuff. But you got to have the psych on your kids. You, you just have to. Because who knows that? I don't know how large this young man is, but he could be a very large dude if he's playing football. So that's just my thought. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>